Hello again, I'm Ahmed Fauzi, and welcome to yet another segment in this live Facebook event on Peace Day 2016. It's a great honor to have with us today Melissa Morbeck, the Executive Director of the Corporate Alliance Against Domestic Violence. Let me say that again, the Corporate Alliance Against Domestic Violence, and an incredible supporter of Peace Day with us here today for this peace talk on finding peace. Needless to say, Melissa is also part of the Peace One Day Domestic Abuse Coalition. Melissa, welcome. Thank you, Ahmed. And uh, could you please, um, the, 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 incred the statistics are incredible, aren't yes, they? Yes, they are. I mean, we're hearing that, that, that only 3% of violence is caused by war. Yes. 97% of violence is in the home, in the school, yes. in the places of work. Yes. Which is incredible. It is. Uh, because all we hear about uh, on the news is war. Yes. Um, could you please start by telling us a little bit about yourself and your organization? Thank you, Ahmed. It's great to be here today with peace one day and talking about peace. Because you can't have peace in the world unless you have peace at home. And unless you have peace within your places of work. And the work that we do is working with employers all over the world, but predominantly in the UK, talking about an issue that impacts one in four women, one in seven men, 950,000 children, 75% of people who endure violence are targeted at work, and there will be millions of people every day who go to work with the threat of coercive control and physical violence. And what we do is we make sure that employers know about their options, what they can be doing about it, what their legal obligations are, and how they can respond to a crisis of humanity. When we look at how people behave and what people walk in their lives, we so often hear about our employees and, you know, they may be fabulous performers and suddenly it will dip. Or they may be people who their attendance starts to change a little bit. Or it could be that they're very worried about things. Well, it's we as employers how we respond. With violence, it's this insidious, silent epidemic. People are ashamed and afraid to talk about it. And so what we do is we lift the lid. And sometimes you don't know what you don't know. And when I started working ages ago, we had a woman who had breast cancer where I worked. And the employer didn't know that it was not OK to fire her. Well, the same is true for people who endure violence and who endure abuse. Civic society can be part of such a holistic response to violence by doing simple, proactive things. This isn't about getting into people's personal space or getting into their private lives. It's about making sure that you have employees who are productive, who are happy, who are contributing, who make a difference. If you make that kind of difference, then you have people who are well, who are happy, who we have a lot of well-being initiatives in our workplaces and so what we do is make sure that employers know what it is that they can be doing to make that happen. So if you have an employee, for instance, who suddenly is having sustained changes in behavior or sustained issues of absenteeism, how can you speak to that person? Should you speak to them? What are your legal obligations? But more importantly, what resources and what help can you offer that person if they wish to take it in order to make their lives safe and free. When we come to work, it's not a hand that comes to work. It's a whole person. I don't know about you, but me, when I go to work, I'm terrified about what's going to happen to the dog? Is it going to snow today? How am I going to get home? And all of this stuff goes through my head. So when I go into work, I have things that I'm thinking about. Imagine if you have someone stalking you. Imagine if you have somebody who's following you, 
all the time, who's ringing you on the phone, who's texting you. So what we do is make sure that employers know what they can be doing. So that's what I do. And I love what I do. Fascinating work. Um, and what is your approach to raising awareness about this very sensitive issue of domestic abuse? You know, it's funny. Our approach changes over time, as our approach to peace changes over time. Risk is dynamic. How we have conversations and how we speak with people changes over time. And I think we s first started with what are the legal obligations? What are the costs of domestic abuse? It costs employers 1.9 billion pounds annually in this country alone. That's 89 pounds per employee in this country that employers are already paying for the price of domestic abuse and violence. And we used to bring that up to employers and it would resonate with them. And now employers are starting to have conversations about the health and well-being of their employees. So they're looking at the impact of stress. They're looking at the impact of mental health and well-being of their employees. So we go in and we have conversations with employers talking about all the great work that they already do, like anti-bullying, anti-harassment, all the work that they do within their communities, because it's important to remember that an employer is just one part of community, so that they may be volunteering at shelters to paint a shelter. Well, what are they doing about reemploying people? So what we talk about is it's the superordinate conversation around peace, but it's also the conversation around what are you already doing to make peace happen for your employees? And we engage in that. Employers are often really frightened to have this conversation. They don't want to step on people's toes. They don't want to get into somebody's personal life. They think it doesn't happen in our backyard. It doesn't happen to people like me. It doesn't happen to people in the advertising industry, in the communications industry, in any industry. But whether you're a bus driver or the CEO of an organization, this epidemic does not discriminate. So every single aspect of society has to respond. Epidemic, you called it. Well, the World Health Organization calls it an epidemic. Well, what, what are the greatest challenges you face in the work you do? <coughs> <laughs> Cynicism. I think also the challenges we face are employers thinking often, and like everyone, you become weary that this conversation continues and that it doesn't happen to people like us. Hmm. And so employers, when you talk about barriers, they're often frightened to have these conversations because they think that they're intruding on somebody's personal life, and that's not true. There are simple, proactive things that employers can be doing, like helping people with time off to go to court, um, escorting to and from work, doing coordinated responses, reaching out to all those good organizations that you had a conversation earlier today with some of the coalition leaders. Absolutely. And all those wonderful organizations, no matter where you are in the world, if you look at some employers, some of them say Diageo is the largest or second largest employer in all of Africa. What is it that they can be doing to help their employees? So it's also starting a conversation and then seeing it through as well. Absolutely. It's so impressive, the work that you do, uh, Melissa. I, I, I have a hundred questions to ask you, but let me ask you this. Sure. Why do you support Peace Day? I support Peace Day because peace is fundamental. Many, many, many years ago, I was working as a very high-level executive in an organization, and I would be absolutely terrified of going home. And I was absolutely scared to death about the impact of the violence in my own life. And because my employer at that time, and then when I fled, the employer I went to 
didn't matter what my background was, what I looked like, what I sounded like. They cared about me as a person because at the <coughs> end of the day, we're all people. They helped me save my life. I support Peace Day because I know that peace can happen. You can move from violence to peace, and it can happen. Every single person in the world has this opportunity. Every single business leader has the opportunity to make a difference for each of their employees. If the CEO of my organization didn't start and end the day with the fact that, yes, it might have been advertising, but it was every single person's contribution that made a difference, I wouldn't be here today. So why I support Peace One Day and Peace Day is the ethos that you can be free, that there's no shame in peace, there's no shame in being alive, and there's no shame in saying, come walk with us and be part of this incredible movement where we can have a conversation. So many businesses today, I've been at three events today, are having conversations about peace and peace within their workplaces because of today. Mm -hmm. That 15, 20 years ago, <coughs> they didn't have. So this movement is changing lives, changing conversations. So, the, so, so how can Peace Day specifically help in the issue that you're dealing with, domestic abuse? It can become what's called a soft lever <coughs> for employers to hang a hat on. So for instance, every single employee in certain businesses that I work with today are wearing a Peace One Day t-shirt. They might be wearing the button. They might be going for a walk. They might be actually taking time to reflect about what does peace mean to them. How many in your alliance, corporate alliance? Oh, uh, we reach well over five million employees. Absolutely. Um, we do lots and lots of work. Um, and what's interesting is that you have employers who are very large, huge employers, to um, my hairdresser <laughs> as well. So it's big and it's small. And it's also about people who may have lost their jobs due to violence as well. And how do we ensure that people can get back into work as well? Because people want to feel useful. People want to re be respected and heard and listened to. And that's part of what workplaces can do. Just like you have that within your schools, within your places of faith and worship as well. In the last minute we have together, yes. I could talk to you for hours, of course. <laughs> In the last minute we have together, w what would you tell someone who's listening to you, who's inspired by what you're saying, about how they can contribute to helping people who have suffered from domestic abuse in a minute? That's going to be hard for me, but I'll try really hard. Um, I'm not good on succinct, as you can tell. Um, I think the most important thing is knowing that what they do matters and values and to listen and to know what the resources are and that one person can make a difference, can change a life, help somebody see that there is an opportunity to move beyond violence into peace and that workplaces can make that kind of difference. That was brilliant. Thank you. Succinct, to the point, effective, impactful. Well, this is why I... Melissa we Moorbeck. Do, we do what we do. Thank it, you so much for joining you. us. It was a great pleasure talking to you and thank most of all listening to you. Thank you. Um, good luck with your, your very valuable and inspirational work. Thank you. And for joining us today. Thank you for your inspiring and thoughtful words. Um, thank you all for watching this um, Peace Talk uh, today on Finding Peace. Our next program is our fifth and final Peace Talk, and it's with uh, Peace One Day ambassador and actor Jude Law. As always, don't forget, this is the day to reach out to people, to make peace, to say you're sorry, to say I love you, whatever it takes to make peace, do it and let us know about it. Thank you very much. I'll see you very soon. <laughs>